this was an unfolding catastrophe. The numbers of new cases and deaths are still rising. Ebola is the world's most dangerous virus. The disease is out of control in West Africa. Action was needed immediately. All together, the family member that I lose, 17. God has called us to care for the dying, to care for those that are suffering. We can't say we're Samaritan's Purse and not help. I was confident that what we were doing was the right thing to do. I don't think I was scared yet. I should have been very scared. As the epidemic escalated, we were just desperately trying to stay one step ahead. My phone rang, and Ken Isaacs said, one of our doctors, Kent Brantley, has Ebola. David looked at me, and he said, you too have Ebola. And then Barbara was diagnosed with Ebola. There was a high likelihood her team members were going to die. I don't know how to describe how afraid we were. But we still went in hour after hour, taking care of the Liberians and taking care of Ken and Nancy. We're there to save life. We're there in your name. Why? Despite the fact that things were out of control, we knew that God was in control. My greatest fear is that I would have to raise my kids alone. I felt broken. Who was going to take care of my children? God puts you in places and supplies the strength to deal with. If they're on our team, they are our blood. No matter what it took, let's get them out. Time is ticking. Jesus Christ didn't run. We run to the fire. We don't run away from it. In 2014, Samaritan's Purse had already been at work for a decade in West Africa when a deadly Ebola epidemic swept through the region. And as the world largely ignored the plague, Samaritan's Purse medical missionaries fought to control it. The world took notice when Dr. Kent Brantley and hygienist Nancy Reitbull caught the disease themselves. And Dr. Brantley joins us now, along with Franklin Graham, the president and CEO of Samaritan's Purse International Relief. Gentlemen, we've just seen the trailer of uh, Facing Darkness and a powerful, powerful story. Uh, Dr. Graham, let's begin with you. What led to the decision process of Samaritan's Purse sending medical teams into the into really the epicenter of harm's way when the Ebola crisis broke out? Well, uh, to be honest with you, we didn't do that. Uh, we were working in Liberia uh, as a result of the Civil War. We've been there since 2003, just trying to help the country, trying to help the churches uh, rebuild coming out of that war. And one of the projects that we we're working on was the Elwa Hospital, and Dr. Brantley was serving there as a missionary doctor for Samaritan's Purse in this hospital when Ebola uh, came into West Africa. It started in uh, Sierra Leone and Guinea, and uh, then within a few months it came across the border, and it was then in Liberia, and there was there, no one was there to fight it. And so Samaritan's Purse had to stop everything that it was doing, and all of our teams began to focus on Ebola, and Dr. Brantley, uh, we asked him uh, if he would be willing to take the lead on this and be the, the, the lead medical doctor, which he did. And he gave the direction to the Ebola treatment unit. And we're just so thankful uh, for his leadership. He did an incredible job. We, we had to learn on the fly. Uh, Ebola was like a tidal wave uh, mm. staring you right in the face. Mm. And we had to do all that we could to try to try to make a difference in that country. And this film, uh, this movie is about how Dr. Brantley and the others uh, work to save the life, but it's how God saved their lives in the end mm. uh, when they both, uh, Dr. Brantley and Nancy Wright, both got Ebola. And it's going to be out March 30th. It's going to be in theaters for just one night called Facing Darkness. And if people want to know information about this, they go to facingdarknessmovie.com and find out how to get tickets. But also where the theaters are 
in their area. But it's an incredible film, and it's the real deal. These are the real people. These are not actors, but these are the real people. Mm. Uh, Dr. Brantley, what was it like uh, being there and, and seeing the emergence of this epidemic kind of un un unfolding before your eyes? What were you thinking when you recognized and, and realized the gravity of the situation in West Africa? When we first heard about the outbreak, as it was identified in Guinea at the end of March, we, we at Elwa Hospital immediately began preparing. We knew that if we were not prepared when Ebola came to our area, that our, our friends and our colleagues, our coworkers, would pay the ultimate price. And so we began immediately at the end of March preparing to fight this virus that we had never seen before. Mm. Um, and by the time the, the wave of, of the disease came to Monrovia, uh, we were practiced and experienced and, and ready to, to join in that fight. Mm. Uh, Dr. Brantley, staying with you for a moment, do you, uh, do you know how you contracted Ebola, how you came down with, with, the, uh, with the disease? And, and real quickly, if you could just share, what was that moment like when uh, you kind of knew the, 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 the writing was on the wall to some respect? Yeah, as you can imagine, I've thought a lot about how did I, how did I contract this disease? And the truth is I'll never know. I will never know how it happened. There was no breach of protocol or, or accident. I really think it happened as I held the hands of uh, the daughter of a dying woman, as I tried to comfort her and gain her trust as we tried to take care of her mother. I think that was probably my point of contact. And then as, as I became sick and got my diagnosis, you know, the, the question really was, I, I know God can save me from this, but even if he doesn't, mm. I want to be faithful. How, how do I live faithfully in the midst of this circumstance? Mm. And uh, Dr. Graham, uh, what was going through your heart, your soul, your mind, when the news uh, came to your desk or your email inbox uh, about you know, Samaritan's Purse, SP personnel who are now uh, really in a, in a place of, of needing some help from the outside? Well, this was probably one of the darkest days uh, in my life when I got uh, a phone call. I was working in Alaska on one of the Smart First projects when uh, I got the, the word. This is, I think, it was the 23rd of of uh, January, or excuse me, of July, that we thought Dr. Brantley might have it. And then on Saturday, the 26th, word came that it was actually he did have Ebola, and that I needed to call his wife, and I. Mm -hmm. That was one phone call I didn't want to make because I, I knew and she knew that this was a death sentence. And Dr. Brantley knew this was a death sentence. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing that we could do. There's there no medicine that he could take. Mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't anything that was on, you know, on the shelf that he could do to help save his life. And we just began to pray. And this is a, this is a story of God working miracles and God saving the life of Dr. Brantley and Nancy Wrightbolt and getting them back to this country. And by the time he came back to the United States, the whole world was watching. Mm -hmm. And the, there were cameras showing this beaming around the world live. And it's an incredible story of what God did. And that's why we wanted to make this film. It's going to be out on March 30th, uh, one night only. And it's a, a, I hope churches will go. I hope uh, schools will go. Uh, this, this movie, I believe, can maybe motivate another generation of young doctors like Dr. Brantley to go into harm's way, to go to the, the darkest corners of this world, to be a light for the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's my prayer that this, this film will be used in that way, and the proceeds from it go to missions. It will support medical missions. So uh, this will be a, a great way for churches to get involved and to expose their young people mm. uh, to the opportunities that exist in medical missions today. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Graham. One quick question for you, Dr. Brantley, uh, before we go today. You went back to Liberia in 2015. Uh, what was that experience like and what did you learn? Uh, that, that opportunity to go back to Liberia was kind of some closure for our family on, on a season of life that will, will be with us forever. But really, mostly it was a chance to say thank you to so many people the people who worked alongside us in the Ebola treatment unit, people who took care of me when I was sick, and so many people who participated and made possible my treatment and my evacuation. It really was a chance to say thank you to the people of Liberia. Well, thank you for joining us today, Dr. Franklin Graham and Dr. Kent Brantley, to 
Find out more and to go see Facing Darkness yourself. You can go to facingdarknessmovie.com. Again, one night showing only March 30th. You can find the theater that's nearest you and uh, participate in this tremendous project. And as Dr. Graham said, proceeds are going to go to support world missions. More coming up here on Harvest in just a moment.